it be, but mod's the win. Water is life. Where we're sitting right now is so pristine. It just seems like a world away from the top and the waste and the bottled water, you know? If people worked together and we were smart, we'd still be able to come back and drink this water like we used to when I was a kid. For Indigenous people, that's part of our fight to reclaim our Indigenous way of life, which is central around the water. And we're in Wasak Singh, and Wasak Singh is that light on the shoreline. It's exactly how it is right now, how we're seeing it. All of life is first formed within water, and our great migration talks about how we follow the waterways. And it's such a shame to think that something this beautiful can be destroyed just by our negligence. It's imperative that we get the message to everybody else and, and make sure that we all are working together to do this. <laughs> My name is Chris Nargang. I am an archaeologist and artist. My grandmother was a residential school survivor who hid her true identity from our family. I am on this journey to find my truth, reconcile the past, and continue the legacy that was stolen from her. Way. I'm Anishinaabe from Batuana First Nation, and I belong to the Three Fires Medewin Medicine Society. The movement of Indigenous knowledge revitalization is thriving across Turtle Island, and I want to introduce Chris and all of you to the revolutionary work being done by those who have dedicated their lives to shifting colonial narratives by harnessing Indigenous knowledge. We are the, the future, future our, our ancestors, ancestors dreamed of. Our prophecies tell us that the time is now to reclaim, rematriate, and revitalize the knowledge intended for us. This, this is Future, future History. History. so, so hard to get an interview or get any time with Josephine Mandeman right now because she's walking the Great Lakes and this is her final journey that she's going to be making for the water. And did you realize that she's walked over 10,500 miles? And she's actually connecting uh, the water northeast, south, and west, which is incredible. She's following our migration patterns, and I think what's really been amazing for me to witness is to see her take all of that knowledge and all of our history and to stand up for the water and retrace all of those ancestral footsteps. My name is Pitaski, one who comes with the light. My clan is a fish clan, the Wasisi. I am of the Medewin Society, fourth degree Medewin Society, three fire society that I belong in. I'm also a water carrier, water, water protector. My English name is Josephine Mandaman. I'm from originally from Manitoulin Island, but I live in Thunder Bay now. It started 2000, the year 2000, when uh, the Grand Chief talked about the water, woman's, woman's role is water, take care of the water, and that, um, that we have to take care of water because water is life, water is alive, and that we have to, uh, if we continue with our negligence, that's what's going to happen. What's going to happen 30 years from now, he said, an ounce of water is going to cost as much as an ounce of gold if we continue with our negligence. When he finished talking, he looked straight at me. I thought he was talking to me. He was talking to all the people there. And I thought about it, thought about it for a long time. So in the year 2003, we started walking Lake Superior. Just me and this young man. I was alone with the staff and the pail. We we're going to do Lake Superior. That was our intent. Water can hear you. 
water can can hear what you're saying, what you're thinking. When I go to, to the lake and I put my hands in the water, I, I speak to it and I tell it, I love you. I want to take care of you. Because that's what the Creator gave us to do. When you brought us down from the spirit world down to the physical world, it's only our only work was to is to take care of our mother dear. That's what we have to do. So I, I believe that we really need to look at the young the young people. They're the next generation that's going to be taking care of the waters. So you have to understand that Mother Earth, Mother Earth is is a woman too. Within her, she carries life, and so we have to understand that water is life. Water is alive. She is alive. She can hear us. She can hear. She can hear what we're saying. Here we are, Elliot Lake, heading to the culture camp forever. I'm quite excited about today. Me too. We get to talk with Christy Belcourt, and I'm so excited because one of the really cool things about Christy for me is that Josephine, when she started walking, a lot of people really responded to her call to action. And Christy's been one of those people who, although she's not Medewan, she has all of those teachings and walks with them and, and really puts them out in a way that made me realize that this is not just one lodge or one people's responsibility. This is everyone's responsibility. And she's really put it out there to everyone. And that's what I want to understand is why the rest of the world and the rest of the people don't understand how important this is. It's not just an indigenous issue. Absolutely. Every single thing is alive. Everything is interconnected. There is absolutely nothing that is separate. We are the water. In the 1970s, a dam broke, poisoned 90 kilometers of the Serpent River all the way down to, to Lake Huron. It is now the number one source of radioactive materials into the Great Lakes is Elliott Lake. Wow. And that's, for, you know, 30 kilometers from where we are. So it seems like everywhere we look, we're inundated with chemicals and poisons and pollutants. What we're seeing is that it's not the average citizens that are dirtying up their water. It's the multinational corporations. Greed is consuming the world. We're on the verge of a worldwide water revolution. What's sad about it to me is, first of all, that the waters are being harmed at all, but secondly, that we have to fight for water. The most basic of all things that we should be able to not take for granted, but to appreciate, to be able to have for, for our children and for every species to have. There's no treatment plants for birds. You know, there's no treatment plants for the animals. We literally need everything else and nothing needs us. We are at the bottom of the food chain. And because of that, this kind of living in balance and learning how to walk softly and not harm anything is the most crucial thing. If greed is consuming the world, then the antidote to greed is, is giving. It's generosity, and that seems counterintuitive, right? It seems like, seems like, how could we ever give more? I mean, haven't Indigenous people given enough? But if greed is what's consuming the world, then we need to turn this, this energy around, this bad energy that's in the world. We're at the point now where we can no longer sit by and do nothing. We can't just watch this happen. We must take action. If our hearts and our conscience demands it, we have to do it. We are the water, and the water is us. So I just pray with the tobacco as we sing the song. And we'll just pray that all the waters around the world can be clean, that the people will work together, that they'll be respectful to one another. The waters that are in the wombs of the babies will be clean so that the babies can be strong of the next generation of all species not just the human species. Right into the camera. You can start by saying, introduce yourself, where you're from, 
and this is to share our perspectives from our communities with the rest of the world. Okay. Speed. Rolling. Bojo, Kaskate Ginukwe, Nadishnakaj, Mishiki Nadodam, Wikwanong, Ajudena Nadonjaba, Nijo Medeo, Ogichiro Kwe Nandao. My Shaganash name is Patricia Shanu. I'm Ben Vikinu, and I'm a counselor for the Chippewa of Virginia Island First Nation. To us in our culture, water is life, right? Everything revolves around water. This water vessel represents Nishnabe Kwe. It represents the responsibility that we all have as Nishinaabe Kwe to carry water, to carry life. This water vessel was one of the first water vessels that started the water walk. This was the original vessel carried by Josephine Mandaman. So it's very important to acknowledge our grandmother Josephine for all the walks for all the work that she's done for all of people, not just for Anishinaabe people, but for all people. Everybody seems to take it for granted. We don't. Currently, one of the issues that we are facing is our drinking water. I know that this is an issue for many First Nations across Canada, and we were waiting for the federal government to come on board and try and help us with our, pro our project. It just didn't seem to happen that way, so we went and took the initiative to get our own money, our own funding, and do this on our own. Now, the issue is that INAC decided to come on board as the project is already halfway done. The design phase is done and we're about to implement construction. And right at the moment when we need to start construction, they come on board and slow the whole process down. We hit the point now where we are, the design is 99% completed. And now what we're waiting to do is just build. And they come on board and said they need to review all of our documents. So we can't actually start building until the INAC approves the documents. The water at the Potlatek First Nation is so dirty, people there are being told they shouldn't even wash clothes in it. There's no proper water treatment plant. The problem, unacceptably high levels of arsenic and manganese in the groundwater make it not just a boil water advisory, they can't consume it at all. It absolutely boggles my mind that we're 45 minutes north of Toronto and Georgina Island has had a boil water advisory for two years. And when you see all the cottages and you see all the boats and you see the garbage floating, it makes you really think about how are we gonna save this and preserve this for our children and our grandchildren and their, and their children. We have to stop it somewhere and I'm hoping that's what we're gonna hear today. That's what I think is so integral about the work that Carrie Ann Charles is doing, is that she's integrating traditional knowledge into everything that she does. And she has something called tech, which is traditional ecological knowledge. So she's been revitalizing a creek on Georgina Island, but she's been using traditional ecological knowledge as the guideline, um, the motivation for the work that she's doing. So bringing in young people and including them in that as well, and bringing in elders who hold those stories, who hold that traditional knowledge. So it's not just science, it's not just environmental protection, it is the revitalization of our traditional knowledge within her community and letting that extend beyond Georgina into even uh, more communities now. Everybody's got a story for Grady's Creek. When I was a kid, I remember, you know, we used to be able to go in there with canoes and paddle around and spear pipe. Our medicines would grow in there. Over the last 10 years, I think it would be that Gertie's was pretty much non-existent. So when you did the restoration, like, did you restore it right down to the water? So what we did, yep, yeah, um, I had a crew that we hired. They came in and they cleared a lot of the debris and the garbage and stuff out of it. I haven't seen pike in here yet, but there has been a whole Ooh, lot of minnows. Oh, there's lots of little fish, yeah. There was nothing in here before. When I first started doing the environment stuff, it's like, we've got so much to do and we've got nothing. We've got no capacity. And then I take a look around and like in the province and stuff, and they've got all these organizations that do these works for, for free. So with the restoration, our school kids, they were brought in to help do the planting. I've got the Conservation Authority involved and 
She has come over and she has taught our kids how to do Bethnic and vertebrae identifications and how that relates to the water quality. They've got little test kits and stuff. They come down once a month and they are now my monitors. The kids. The kids are my monitors. We do another project that we partner with the Conservation Authority and the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. We do a fish hatchery. In October, when the ministry goes out and gets the eggs for their hatcheries, they bring us 100 eggs. What kind of eggs? Trout, lake trout. There's lake trout here? There's lake trout. That's their indicator fish oh, of the I health see. of the lake. Like, like the canary in the mine. So traditional ecological knowledge. You called it TEK? TEK. TEK. What does gathering that information look like? Is it stories? Is it old pictures? How much knowledge are we talking about? It's all of the above. OK. Growing up, we never had the opportunity to learn about our tradition and culture. It's a learning process for me that I'm really loving to be able to, as I'm learning, there's other people learning with me. We did the water teachings and we blessed the water when we did the planting down at the lakeside. How did all of that information that you gathered play into the restoration of the creek? Through our climate change project, I've got to work with the Environmental Protection Agency. They've developed this tool. It's called the Properly Functioning Condition Tool. And what they do is they go out to a stream, a wetland, an ecosystem, and they do this full assessment on it. They don't look at just the problem area. They look at everything. And they find the community members, and they, they look for that traditional ecological knowledge. And they base their restorations on the traditional ecological knowledge um, that they gather from the community members. That's what I love about this project too. It's, it's sort of marrying the Western science with the TEK. And with our projects, I say it's validating this Western science, not the opposite. Not the it's yeah. not the other way around. So it's, it's, well, it's the know, truth. It's the yeah. truth. It really is. It's set, really the and I think that there is that paradigm right now of using Western modern tools like recorders, like video cameras, and going and using that is sort of, in one way, really against all of the, Absolutely, the passing right? down of knowledge, and a lot of elders are against it. So I think that it's an interesting shift right now because I think it is vital to take all of the tools that Western society has provided us with and actually use it to flip it on its head and gather. And I think that's where, you know, Georgina Island has really been successful. And we're, we're just starting to get back into our culture and traditions. And it's, you know, sort of my generation and uh, probably the, the younger generation, the generation under me that is bringing that back. You've brought in the elders now. You've brought in the children. You've brought in schools. You've brought in other communities. Like, it's revitalized not just the creek. It's revitalized your community, and it's actually working outside of it. Yeah, and I think that sort of brings that back to the question about working with the other communities. When we set out to do our climate change project, I want, we set out to develop a framework, develop something. If we're gonna do something that's working well, let's develop something that so that somebody else can take it and they can sort of roll it out in their community, right? Because we've developed this framework and I'm actually now um, going to the second year of implementing and working with other First Nations. There's four other First Nations right now I'm working with. You know, we're at that generation where there's that gap because of residential schools. We've lost a lot of elders in a very short period of time and all of that knowledge is going with them. This is why we're doing this, and this is how we're doing it, because we want to be able to have that information to pass down to future generations. I love my community, and I'm, I do the things that I do because it's my community. And I have kids, and I'm going to have grandkids. I want them to be able to play in the creek like I played in the creek. The water is everything to us. As we've gone through this journey, 
that made me realize that water is actually spirit and we need to speak to and, and offer ourselves to protect the water. Before I started this journey, I never knew who you were. I never knew that you were that close to me. I never knew that you were in my spirit. I want to say chi mi for this journey that has brought me to the realization that we really are one in spirit and in body. Miigwech. All right, it's been too long. What? Well, it's just so beautiful. I can no longer talk to the water without going in the lake. 